Google just launched Flutter 3.27 with stuff like Impella for Android, Swift Package Manager, and Dart Workspaces. Let's dive in. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's been less than a day ago that Google launched Flutter 3.27 on the stable channel. I think it's good to um, yeah just have a look at the What's New Medium article that they published to see what uh, what shiny new things we have. So let's go. First things first, a lot of uh, Cupertino updates, uh, a lot of updates on the widgets. Um, uh, yeah, they updated stuff like the checkbox, uh, radio button, uh, the switch. Uh, gave it more customizability as well as more feature parity with the material counterparts. So that's always nice. Um, yeah, they added some stuff for the sliding segmented control. So you have more control over the design of that. Uh, there's been a slight update on the navigation bar as well as the sliver counterpart. So now you can see here in the GIF that... Um, it's transparent at first, and once you slide the content uh, under it, then uh, we'll get a color. That's nice, and uh, yeah, more up to par with the uh, native component of, uh, of iOS, of course. What more? Yeah, they did a lot of updates on the buttons. So now, uh, well, um, it's up to par with the button sizes uh, of native iOS. Uh, and you can also use uh, tinted variants, so you get that like translucent, glassy effect that you uh, expect from iOS components. But it's nice. They did a small update on the Cupertino picker as well as the date picker. So now, um, yeah, previously if you tapped like an item at the bottom, it would not uh, scroll there. So you had to scroll there to select it. But now you can just tap it and it will select it and scroll to it automatically. So that's good. They also added a slide to tap on the alert dialog for Cupertino. A lot of updates. Uh, also on the action sheet. Context menu, date picker, the magnifier. It's, yeah. Yeah, just a lot of Cupertino updates in general. Um, yeah, if you use them a lot in your projects, uh, do take a deeper dive into uh, all the changes that they uh, they made to see if they may affect you or uh, help you in any way. Um, yeah, of course, also material design, a lot of updates there. Uh, they did some changes on the card theme, the dialogue theme, and the tap bar theme uh, to make them more up to par with how um, other components... Um, uh, get their theming through uh, uh, the global team, so that's good. They also did a lot of updates on the carousel view, and they now introduce a carousel view dot weighted uh, constructor, um, where you can uh, well more easily get a carousel view with uh, dynamic layouts, uh, like you see here at the bottom. Uh, so now with that carousel view weighted. Uh, you can adjust the flex weights parameter in it. And based on that, you can um, adjust the sizes of the, um, the items in the carousel view that you see. So 3, 2, 1 means the left one is the biggest one, right one is a smaller one. 7, 2, 1, uh, oh, well, fairly big one on the left and then a small item on the right. Or 1, 7, 1, um, this is like a good example of that. So the middle item will be um, quite large, whereas the left and right items will uh, will be fairly small. But the nice thing is that you also get these animations uh, when you scroll. So I think that's a very nice uh, improvement there. And um, well, looking at stuff like um, WebOS for LG um, televisions, yeah, this is it looks. Yeah, it says Flutter TV, so. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, maybe they did do it because of that. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a good way to uh, to get those uh, television apps working as well. Pretty nice. Other things. Um, segmented button now has a direction property. Button style, icon stuff. Yeah, they now, now did a fix 
um, when you mix certain route transitions, you could get like into a weird situation uh, where you use different transitions uh, throughout the flow. Um, but when navigating back, it looks a bit weird. Um, and now they made sure that the enter uh, transition corresponds with the exit transition and the other way around so that it always looks uh, so that it always looks good. It always looks uh, the proper way, like you intended it to. Some text selection improvements, so you can now shift click to, uh, well, uh, select a certain piece straight away. Yeah, this was also a very nice one. Um, so let's say that you have like a column or a row and you want to introduce some, some spacing between all of the items. So normally what you would do is add like a sized box or, um, well, maybe do something like this so create a loop to uh, well add sized boxes to uh, uh, well between all the items um, but now it's actually fairly simple and you just you can just add some spacing um, yeah I do think that it's a, it's a nice improvement um, improves readability for sure uh, especially if you have like a lot of items in the row or the list uh, the column sorry um, yeah, and also just the code that you have to write uh, makes it a lot simpler. So uh, good convenience uh, stuff there. Uh, yeah, Impeller on Android. Uh, it's been a while since we had Impeller for iOS in the stable channel uh, by default. Um, and uh, yeah, we were still waiting on Android. And uh, since 3.27, it's actually uh, the default rendering engine. So we now make use of uh, the Vulkan APIs from Android. Uh, those were introduced in Android 7. So um, if you support devices before Android 7, or well, at least devices that don't have the Vulkan APIs yet, then it will still use the old Skia rendering engine. Um, but yeah, every device that supports Vulkan will now use Impeller by default, which is a very nice uh, improvement. Uh, you can still disable it if you really need to uh, if you find found like like weird ui stuff or whatever you could still uh, use the no enable impeller flag or define it in your android manifest uh, to disable it but um yeah didn't find anything weird so far uh, myself so that's good and i think also uh, well since the flutter team has been waiting uh to release this on the stable channel for a while. I do think that they uh, tested it thoroughly. At least you would hope so, yeah. Some more improvements on iOS devices as well. Um, yeah, usually see these uh, graphs. Don't really test it myself, but I uh, take their word for it that they, uh, they uh, improve the performance there. Web improvements, uh, image decoding in Safari and Firefox. Platform views were optimized to reduce the number of canvas overlays, improving rendering efficiency. All plugins and packages developed by the Flutter team are now compatible with WebAssembly. That's nice. A lot of accessibility fixes, rendering bugs being fixed. Canvas kits, one of them. Improve drag scrolling in multi view mode. Right. And then Swift Package Manager. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice improvement for the iOS side. Uh, Swift Package Manager has been there for some time now for, uh, for native iOS developers. And uh, well, Flutter is officially migrating to Swift Pack Package Manager now uh, in the beta and stable channels. Um, yeah, so it's still off by default, uh, because, uh, well, how they're telling it is while we iron out the kinks, uh, so there are still some, some quirks apparently, um, but, uh, yeah, you could, uh, turn it on, I guess, um, plugins still have to migrate to the Swift, uh, package manager, of course, um, but I saw that popular, uh, plugins, so here, 
Firebase, the Plus plugins, uh, and many more have already migrated. So that's a good, uh, good first start. Whoops. And I think the good thing is because uh, yeah, I think we all ran into CocoaPods issues, Ruby issues at one point. Um, that in the future you won't need it anymore uh, once we use uh, Swift Package Manager fully because it's bundled in uh, in Xcode. So uh, no more hassle there. Yeah, so Edge to Edge is now on by default for Android 15 and up. Um, yeah, if you didn't turn it on yet, uh, which, uh, well, I would highly recommend because your app looks uh, way nicer. But if you didn't yet, then uh, do, uh, well, check your app on Android 15 or above to see if you have any weird UI issues or whatnot. They did some uh, updates to save area meta query to, um, well, allow for free form. For example, in tablets, you can have like this, this window view of your app, uh, which you can resize, of course. Uh, so that always has to, uh, well, be handled uh, gracefully. Yeah, and we now get the Kotlin DSL uh, for our build scripts for Android. So previously, uh, well, Gradle is the build tool for Android. Um, and our scripts were always in Groovy, uh, the Groovy language. And um, well, a Kotlin DSL uh, has been out for a while and Android native uh, developers have been uh, using it for some time now. Uh, but we also finally get it. Uh, that's, uh, that's very nice. Gives you better code completion and uh, readability and just more, well, consistency with a, uh, well, let's say, regular language like like Dart is, for example. Yeah, this was also nice, I think. Um, they now introduced, uh, they've now introduced a download counter on pop.dev instead of that, uh, well, rather weird popularity score that they had uh, was not really transparent. Uh, now with the download counter, I do think it uh, clear some things up and at least, uh, well, gives you a better idea of what it actually is that you're looking at. Yeah, so a nice thing that I bumped into was the pub workspaces, the Dart workspaces uh, feature that they introduced in Dart 3.6 that came with uh, the new Flutter version. Um, and it's pointed towards, uh, well, mono repo support. And I'm not sure if you guys already use uh, mono repos at all. Um, I use it in some projects to have my, my layers uh, separated a little better. And uh, this feature definitely helps. Um, we use uh, well tools like Melos to uh, have easier uh, well control over our uh, mono repos. But this, um, this feature, uh, yeah, uh, gives you a good start into um, uh, well, handling a mono repo without the well, without the need for for external tools like Melos or, or something else. Uh, might be nice to look at a little bit of code here. Um, yeah, so I have a directory here with um, with two projects, so a package and uh, well, a Flutter project. What you can do with uh, Dart WordSpaces is you can create a new file. Um, of course, you can create a new file. I don't know what the error was. Um, yeah, so what I meant to say was you can add a pubs bag to the root of your mono repo. Um, well, of course, uh, fill it with content like you're used to. Let's say my workspace. That home completion is nice. Uh, but what you can do now, uh, yeah, and do make sure that you're on Dart 3.6 at least, because the support for workspaces, uh, well, starts here. But what you can do now is you can define um, workspaces here. Let's say workspaces. Um, and then here you define all the, the well, the projects, like packages, uh, everything that is in your mono repo that you want to handle. So in this case, uh, my first pack and playground. So those are my two, uh, well, projects in this mono repo that, that I have. 
Um, so what I can do now is in the pub spec of each um, each project, I can add a resolution, a workspace, and do the same here. And then you should be good to go. So clear this. Do a pub get in, well, not my first pack. Now we're in the workspace. So let's say start pub get. And now you'll see that you don't have like a pub spec lock in each project, but you have a, a general one in your whole monorepo. Um, so we got dependencies for all the packages that we defined in the workspace. And the nice thing is that um, it will also handle conflicting dependencies. So yeah, very nice stuff there. Um, do hope that they're going to expand it. I did have a look at also maybe running, well, Build Runner, for example, uh, in a mono repo setup with these uh, workspaces. But yeah, that didn't work yet. Uh, so I'm hoping to they will uh, I'm hoping they will uh, definitely expand this feature to also support things like that and uh, yeah curious to see yeah so we also got some nice dev tools updates uh, we got a new flutter inspector uh, that you can try out with the toggle at the top now try uh, the Flutter DevTools with WebAssembly, with uh, Wasm, good stuff. And then we have the list of uh, breaking changes and deprecations. Um, one thing that caught my eye immediately was uh, this one, the deep linking flag that we used to uh, well have to set. Um, it's now opt-in by default instead of opt-out and we having to enable it. Um, yeah, they do mention that if you use third-party plugins for deep linking, uh, that it might be a breaking change. So um, yeah, you might have to do some changes there to, uh, well, make it work again. Uh, you keep your eye, eye out for that. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So I hope you like this, uh, this quick recap of the new uh, Flutter release that we got. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and... I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.